Welcome to today's dentistry with Dr. Blanche Gruby. The goal of our program is to educate you, the patient, in all aspects of the Huggins Gruby Holistic Dental Protocol. On this installment, we're discussing homeopathy. And now, here's Dr. Blanche. Homeopathy is a form of treatment that was brought he here to the United States from a German doctor named Dr. Samuel Hahnemann. He brought it here in the late 1800s. And it's a little difficult to explain exactly what homeopathy is to a lay person who has not had a lot of scientific background. Um, but I'm going to try. I, 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 think, I think you are all smart and I think you can handle this. So let's get going. One of the founding premises in homeopathy, homeopathic philosophy, is that like cures like. So what do we mean by that? Well, Dr. Hahnemann discovered that if you gave somebody a remedy, that's what he called it back then, if you gave somebody a remedy that came from a poison that caused specific symptoms. If you gave that remedy to somebody who had those symptoms without the poison, they just had those symptoms, they would get better. And so that's where he came up with the, the term like cures like. So let me give you an example. For instance, if you were to get bit by a snake, well, the snake venom would enter into your body. You would develop chills, fever, you might even get delirious. Um, you might get a, a dry, sticky, pasty feeling in your mouth. Then your heart rate would go up to maybe 200 beats per minute, and you would die. So those are some of the symptoms that come from getting bit by a snake. So he took those symptoms and categorized all of them. And he literally categorized hundreds and hundreds of thousands of different symptoms. Now, if you take a look at snake venom and you take some of it, and this is exactly what Dr. Hahnemann did, he took snake venom and diluted it. So he took one part of snake venom and diluted it 10 times. But each time he would dilute it, he would shake the material. That's very important. In homeopathy, we call that percussion or percussus. Okay, that means the shaking of the material. So what does that do? Okay, now we've got to get to another section of science, basic chemistry, that says every atom has in its center a nucleus and around the outside the electrons. Now, when I went to school, they always drew the electron as a, as a circle, an oval circle, almost a single line, and they would put a dot in it. And if it was something that had two electrons in its outer line, the, the teacher would put two dots. And so you kind of had this picture in your mind of this, this dot floating around the nucleus of the cell, very similar to the way the, you, know, you have a moon around a planet or you've got stars around a planet, very similar to that. In actuality, though, that electron travels around the nucleus so fast that it creates a cloud. Now, some of you have seen pictures of somebody running very, very quickly, and they were able to capture it, capture it with a, with a camera that has a shutter speed moves so fast that what you see is a cloud. You see a, a blurry picture of the person running, and you know that they're standing in front of the picture, but What's all the rest of it behind him? It, it almost looks like a shadow of the runner. Well, electrons are the same way. They run so fast that they actually leave behind them a cloud. And when you excite an atom, and an atom can be excited by either heating it up or shaking it, when you excite an atom, that cloud gets bigger, and more dense because the electron travels around faster and faster. So if you were to shake something and then very quickly, the instantaneous moment that you stop shaking it, 
you dilute it, you would be cutting the number of nucleuses in half. But the electron cloud in that excited state would still be there. So then they would shake it again, dilute it again. So now we've gone from 100% to 50% to 25%, half of 25%, 12.5%, half of that is 6.25, and you just can, no, 6.5, you just continue to dilute, dilute, dilute and shake, dilute and shake, dilute and shake. If you continue to do this, you're finally going to get to the point where you actually have no more snake venom. You've diluted it so much that you do not have any more snake venom in the jar. But you still have the excited electron cloud. And what we're learning now in quantum physics, and I call it quantum medicine, is that there's a tremendous amount of information in that electron cloud. It's not just a piece of electricity that's floating around the nucleus. There's actually a specific pattern to it. There's a specific amount of information in it. There's a specific frequency to that electron cloud. So let me reiterate again because I really want to make sure that all of you listening kind of get an understanding of this. You take a certain number of atoms of a material, you dilute it, and you shake it. You dilute it, and you shake it. You dilute it again, and you shake it. And every time you dilute it, you're working with less and less and less of the actual material. But the electron cloud, the energy imprint, if you will, the, the footprint, the frequency of the material is still there. Okay, so we finally get ourselves to the point where Dr. Hanneman would have a glass bottle and he had diluted the snake venom so many times that there actually was no more snake venom in there. Maybe perhaps some alcohol, some uh, milk sugar. Um, they used to use these little white pellets of milk sugar that they would mix. And so that, that's all that's in there, but the electron cloud, the information of snake venom, is still there. And so he would then take that remedy, and if he had a patient who presented themselves with fever, trembling, dry pasty mouth, high heart rate, any one of those symptoms, not all of them together, just any one of those symptoms, he would then give them that remedy, like cures like, and boom, the symptoms would disappear. Now Hanneman was oh, probably a hundred years ahead of his time. He knew what he knew from observation, and he had meticulously recorded all of the symptoms of all of his patients and then recorded which remedies cured the patients. And it's very interesting to note that all of the leading people in the world, the royal family of England, the presidents of the United States, the czars of Russia, all of the leaders in the world all followed homeopathy. They went nowhere without their homeopathic remedy kit and without their homeopathic physician. So why is it that we have a state now, a situation in the United States where 90% of the population don't know anything about homeopathy? They don't even know what it is. Well, when Dr. Hanneman brought it here to the United States, within, within no time, there were 26 medical schools teaching homeopathy in the United States. Then something happened around 1930. I'm not going to get into too much of the heavy politics, but there were some very powerful people who had a lot of money invested in pharmaceuticals in this country. You know that the pharmaceuticals, many of the pharmaceuticals produced in the United States are very closely connected to the oil industry because many of them come from petroleum products. 
So uh, without me saying and spelling it out for you, you need to put the pieces together and kind of figure out who those people were. They were becoming very powerful in the turn of the century up until 1930. And then those very powerful people began to push pharmaceuticals in the medical schools. And they even went so far to say that if a school taught homeopathy, they would refuse them funding. So all of the schools that taught pharmacology got tons of money. The schools that taught homeopathy, zero. So eventually, the schools that taught homeopathy had to give it up until finally the last class, which would be Hanneman Hospital in Philadelphia, the last class graduated in 1954. After that, there were no more homeopathy courses taught anywhere in the United States. Very, very sad day. Homeopathy is still taught in Europe. Um, it's still taught in India. The Chinese have their own method of healing using acupuncture and herbs. They are now having homeopathy introduced to China. And it's now just now starting to have a little bit of interest here in the United States. So why did I go through all of the trouble of explaining to you a little bit about the history of homeopathy and explaining to you exactly what a homeopathic remedy is? Primarily because, as you know, at all Centers for Healing centers, we try to do the best that we can do for our patients without hurting them. We actually do pay attention to the first sentence of our Hippocratic Oath that said, first, do no harm. So if a patient has a symptom and it can be cured with a homeopathic remedy, you're much better off doing that than prescribing a pharmaceutical. Why? Why not just take the pharmaceutical? You know it's going to have an effect. Absolutely right. The pharmaceutical is going to have an effect, but every pharmaceutical also has side effects. Homeopathy, if you take a homeopathic remedy and you get the right one, the effect is powerful. If you take a homeopathic remedy and it turns out to be the wrong one, meaning it doesn't get rid of your fever, it doesn't get rid of your symptoms, nothing happens. That's exactly right. Nothing happens. There are no side effects. That's the beauty of homeopathy. Remember again, I said what you're taking when you take a homeopathic remedy is the energy cloud, the footprint, the imprint of the substance. When you take that energy cloud into your body, it either resonates with your body or it doesn't. And if it doesn't, nothing happens. Many years ago, I'm, I know I'm aging myself now, many years ago there used to be a commercial on TV for something called Memorex cassette tape recorders. And now for those of you who were just born 10 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe even 25, 30 years ago, you probably don't even know what a tape recorder is because everything now is done digitally and, and, and on computers. Well, in the old days, we used to actually have small tape recorders and we would put the Memorex tape inside the tape recorder and we walked around taping everything that we could possibly tape mostly music of course but that's what we did back then well this commercial for memorex tape wanted to show that the quality of the tape was so good that when ella fitzgerald sang her song and she reached that certain frequency a glass of water that was placed and this was obviously it was it was good crystal um, a good crystal glass of water that was placed on the table, when she hit a certain frequency, the glass would just vibrate with that frequency and fracture. Boom! Well, then they recorded Ella Fitzgerald and they played the same song on the tape recorder. And they showed that when you played the same song on the tape recorder, another glass of water reached that frequency it accepted the frequency and boom, 
the glass broke. So what's going on here? The frequencies are traveling through space, hit the glass. If the glass resonates at that frequency, the glass will start to vibrate so much that it'll break. But if I was to play something at a different frequency, we suppose I was playing some, some drums and some banging like this, that's not going to shatter the glass. Different frequency. And if I was to do this and the glass didn't shatter, well, hopefully I didn't do it hard enough for the glass to fall off the table, but nothing happens. But if I hit just the right frequency, the glass will shatter. So it's the same kind of theory with homeopathic remedies. If you take a homeopathic remedy and it resonates, the frequency matches the frequencies of your body. Boom. It's like magic. Your symptoms disappear sometimes instantaneously. I just read a report about a situation where a woman had given her father a homeopathic remedy for Alzheimer's. As you know, Alzheimer's is the disease where the brain begins to deteriorate and it deteriorates to the point where they can't remember who they are, where they are, who, you know, none of the names of their family members. And it's, it's a very sad situation. She had given him a homeopathic remedy that was perfect for him. It was his frequency. Boom, like that. His Alzheimer's disappeared. Over, instantly, overnight. I can't even say overnight, instantly. Does that always happen with homeopathic remedies? No, because there's a lot too matching exactly the right frequency for each person. It's still a much better approach than trying a pharmaceutical that's going to have side effects whether or not it's effective. There isn't a single pharmaceutical drug that does not have some negative side effects. And yet, when it comes to homeopathic remedies, and yes, there are hundreds of them, you can take a homeopathic remedy and if it's not the right one for you, nothing is going to happen. So I suppose you could say, if somebody was really cynical, I suppose they could say, well, something bad comes out of that because you've taken something expecting to get well and you don't get well right away, so you lose out on a little bit of time. That's about it. You lose out on a little bit of time. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But you're much better off trying that first than you are going to pharmaceuticals. Now, don't get me wrong. If I've gotten hit by a truck and I'm in the ER, the emergency room of the hospital, and I'm in excruciating pain, that's not the time to start discussing with me what kind of a homeopathic remedy I would like to take. At that point, give me morphine, okay? And I'd been in that situation. I was in a situation where I had heard a hernia and I was in excruciating pain. So much pain that I had never experienced in my entire life. I wanted morphine at that point. And the morphine worked until they wheeled me into the operating room and took care of my hernia. I was very grateful to have one of the best surgeons around take care of me. But after the surgery, after the emergency was over, I no longer wanted to have pharmaceutical drugs. Then I switched over to homeopathic remedies, and I was out of pain in an hour. Totally different situation. If it's an emergency, yes, give me the best allopathic physician on the planet. But for many other situations, and, and sometimes emergencies where there is no allopathic physician, there's no way you can get somebody to a hospital. Then you've got to go through your homeopathic kit and see what you can give somebody just as as a, as a precautionary measure, just to see if maybe you can help the situation. So I recommend that you find a doctor that has taken several courses in homeopathy that doesn't poo-poo it when you say to them, gee, I would like to try a homeopathic remedy first. Find yourself a doctor that does that. Now in our centers for healing, dental centers, we make sure that all of our patients, after having surgery, receive a homeopathic remedy. Yes, if it doesn't work, they're also given a prescription 
to take if the homeopathic remedy doesn't work for them. But 99% of the times the patients say they didn't need so much as a Tylenol. Maybe 1% of the times the patients will say, yeah, as the, as the evening progressed, I needed to take a Tylenol. Homeopathics is really the way to go. So I encourage you all to try to look for somebody who has homeopathic training. That's it for tonight. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. I hope I brought a little bit of light to the subject of homeopathy. Thank you for watching another installment of Today's Dentistry with Dr. Blanche Gruby. The goal of our program is to educate you, the patient, in all aspects of the Huggins Gruby Holistic Dental Protocol and how it offers dentistry that is safe for the whole body. Educate yourself. Watch the other informative and new patient videos right here on our website. Then call for an appointment at Centers for Healing.